Welcome back to the YouTube. The last day before you start prep tomorrow. Yeah, it's the last day. It's day um, minus one of prep tomorrow. Well, I guess it's, no, it's not day zero, is it? No, you start tomorrow. Yeah, so we're T, T minus one days out from 2024 IFBB Pro Classic Physique Prep. What are you making right now? This is cream of rice. This is not a cream of rice tutorial because I'm shit at making it. It's lumpy, it doesn't look good, but it's fine. I don't really care. If anyone's got the best tutorial, you can put it in the comments, but this is not it. But yeah, today's, this is the last day, so we're going for some food tonight. We're going to a nice little Korean spot. I have to say, I don't feel like I need a day to like get all my cravings out. Like I don't, I don't really, I'm not really like thinking that way, which is good. Um, I'm a bit disappointed that you bought me 10 cream eggs, but this is your first bodybuilding prep, so you know that that's, like, you don't know that that's not a good thing to do. But yeah, because obviously now they sat there in the cupboard and like, it's like I want to eat them all. I don't. I, don't, I actually don't want to eat them all, but I feel like I should because I'm not going to eat them. But that's fine. Will you eat them? Why don't you eat them all today? I don't want to eat ten cream eggs, man. I literally have no interest in eating ten cream eggs. <laughs> so yeah, it's all good. We're not, we're not. We're not on that vibe this year. I've told you time and time again. I'm just gonna. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to suffering. I'll be following a meal plan to the T from tomorrow, which is cool. I make things easy. I don't need to think about what I'm eating. I'll just eat it. Um, I have a question. Yeah. How are you feeling about prep this year? just very excited like, I don't know why I'm excited to wake up tomorrow and like start prep but it feels like a lot of things are changing because the last I've not trained for like 10 days I haven't jabbed for 10 days not that I'm like excited to start injecting myself but I'm excited just to begin the process again so yeah it all kicks off tomorrow maybe we need to take everyone through what the setup is I did say I was going to do a, an overview video there's a setup to it? yeah like the programming like my training uh, right, 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 cardio right. Drugs, all that stuff. I did have one more question for you. What is it? So obviously when we've been speaking about prep, you said this time you feel very different yeah. compared to your previous times. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know what that different feeling is. So I said this in a post on Instagram yesterday. <clears throat> I actually, I've actually never felt this excited to prep. Uh, even when, I said this in the post as well, even when I turned pro, I wasn't excited. Like I was, you know, I kind of knew I was going to turn pro that year, but the pressure on me was so huge that I could, it would have been impossible I think to enjoy that level of pressure whereas this year I feel not only like excited to start the process I feel excited to hurt in the process I feel excited to suffer I feel excited to harness the mindset that I've got because I'm just not scared about any of it I have total faith and confidence in Joe I have more faith and confidence in myself than I've ever had I'm going to take all the lessons that I've learned from, learned from any of my previous preps and I'm going to put them into this one I'm confident that my special power this year will be that I'm gonna enjoy it. And I said this on a story yesterday, it's very hard to beat someone who loves it. That's very, very difficult to do. The two hardest people to beat is the person that is desperate for it and the person who loves it. And I don't think I said this publicly, but last prep, I remember literally saying to people, if I qualify for the Olympia, I won't compete there because I'm so sick of the process. And that's pretty deep to say. So yeah, man, that's why. That's gonna be my superpower. <laughs> We have our Korean Gimbap uh, section, which is a restaurant. Well. We have our signature Japan pancake. What did you order for your last meal? Well, we it's not really your last meal, is we it? We ordered, didn't we? It is my last meal. You're not eating tonight? Huh? Are you not going to have any snacks later? I'll probably have some cereal for bad day. Alright, so what did you order? Uh, we got a selection box of meat. That's so touristy, man. I'm embarrassed for us. There's loads of steak in the menu, we weren't really sure what to order, so we got like four selections where we got a bibimbap. Bibimbap's great and if you've never tried bibimbap it's the best thing to come out of South Korea or just Korea in general. Um, we got some bulgogi like sushi type thing and then some chili chili noodles. That's what we got. So see how it goes. <laughs>
Okay, so I think with this being video number one of prep, what we'll do is we'll go through the parameters of it, the different conditions of it. Um, and what I mean by that is obviously what I've got to do, what is in the plan, what is in the program, given that we're around the day, it makes sense to start with what I'm about to do, which is the drugs. Everyone's favorite bit. So initially, anabolics are escalating to 600 milligrams, which is 400 tests, 100 mast, 100 trend from the get-go, which is in here. And now we microdose daily. That's a tiny amount, which is nice. There's actually no trend in here because I don't have it yet, but that will come next week or in the next couple of days. We then have uh, 20 milligrams of your himbine. We have 25 micrograms of T3. We have 100 micrograms of T4. We have everyone's favorite fat burner. 40 micrograms of clay. Haven't felt what that feels like for a while, so we'll see. Anyway, we're gonna get that down us now. And then it's cardio. So we'll talk you through what's going on for cardio next. I'm just gonna double check that you're in by amount because I don't know if it's right. And it's probably the least important one of all of them in terms of magnitude of effect, but let's check it anyway. He's not even got in there. Not even in there. Well, there you go then. It's a little bonus. Maybe that means I don't need to take it yet. There we go then. Perfect example of out of sight, out of mind. We also have six IUs of growth. This is one of those handy little pen, which is is incredible. Um, I'm not taking this fasted because it's gonna necessarily help to mobilize any fatty acids. Um, because as time's gone on, at least the bodybuilding world has learned that it takes a little bit more time for growth hormone to be effective in the system. So that'll probably peak in like, I think it's four hours. So not when I'm, not when I'm doing cardio, which is, what we're going to go do now. Final little thing. BPC 157. And that is not for any other reason than I have injuries and I'm trying to protect them. the whole morning routine protocol for now is wake that's great wake uh, hydrate a little bit <coughs> get the anabolics in well anabolics in life politics and then we head down to the first floor for cardio which at the moment is 20 minutes steady state heart rate target of 140 to 150 and then I will do around 10 minutes of quite misguided I believe what? I need some better guidance on that to make sure I'm actually utilising my time but I think it makes me feel better I mostly stretch out my lower body and my like, thoracic spine and then I do 10 vacuums and then I go into 20 minutes or 50, 15 to 20 minutes in the sauna so that is what we're about to do now
55 in there, so slightly concerning. I'm just going to have quite a good hit. I'll tell you right now, yeah. The sauna, <clears throat> that's a cheat code. That is a cheat code. And I don't know why more people in bodybuilding are not talking about it. Not only huge benefits to cardiovascular health, brain health, like oxidative stress, the expulsion of toxins, like the antioxidant effect. The <laughs> studies on depression are quite profound as well. In terms of the heat stress, the heat shock proteins and how they help us. If you've not, if you've not dived into it, dived into it, if you've not, dived into it before, I'd strongly recommend it. Especially if you're a bodybuilder and especially if you're an assisted one. Because like I said, the benefits are profound. And <clears throat> on top of all of that, you're just sitting in there and basically emulating cardiovascular exercise. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a no-brainer. I've just burnt an additional 180 calories. 100, I mean, as per the watch, obviously we'll take it with a pinch of salt. 190 calories, you know, on top of what I already burnt doing, doing cardio. If you add that up over time, let's assume that I do five cardio sessions per week, every week for the next 20 weeks. Five times 20 is 100. So there's 100 sessions of cardio. That doesn't sound that much, does it? 100 sessions of cardio. Let's say on average I burn 150 calories each time. Well, I just burn an extra 15,000 calories. <laughs> across the course of 20 weeks, I think. It's not, it's not 1,500, is it? My maths is terrible, also. I'll tell you why it's so terrible. My hair right now. So, the plan was, I was gonna go to, to Turkey and get it done before prep. I bottled it because, but I didn't bottle it. I made the right choice to someone who's trying to get first call outs this year. I decided against it because I didn't think it was the right thing to do as an athlete. As an athlete who actually, you know, actually cares about how many places this year. So yeah, that's why I didn't do it. But we'll go after prep. Anyway, the reason I told you that is because I've just put in the micro-needling device and the minoxidil. So we'll see if it proves. What are we having then? What? What are we having? Uh, so meal one, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk you through nutrition now. Uh, so meal one is gonna be every single day for the next five months. Three large eggs, 3.5 or well, 350 grams of egg whites. I've not got that today. So I'm gonna have to top that out with protein and 300 grams of veg is meal one. Let me just talk you through my total nutrition actually. So total nutrition for the day is 3585 calories, 280 protein, 65 fats and 470 carbs. There's no daily non-training day, there's no training day, non-training day difference. It's just the same every day and it's five meals. Uh, there is no magic number of meals, but five is, is a nice one. Uh, you can eat as many or as little meals as you want. I recommend at least four obviously. And the meals are gonna consist of, this first one's no carbs, uh, just protein, a bit of fat and some veg. And then the second meal, which I'll get that I mean shortly will be pre-workout. That's gonna be chicken, rice and veg, surprise, surprise. Joe wants me to have a beetroot in it, which I know the reasons for that it's a bit of a superfood, but beetroot is very expensive and it doesn't taste good out here. It's not pickled, so I'm not gonna have beetroot. So I have carrots, pineapple, and I need to replace the beetroot with something. So yeah, chicken, rice, carrots, pineapple, beetroot, but no beetroot. And then uh, we'll go to the gym. Post-workout meal will be cream and rice, which I prepped yesterday, cream and rice, Protein, blueberries, dark chocolate, and uh, perhaps we'll sit down with the final meal later on and talk you through that final meal. So you just hate when bodybuilders make their like YouTube videos some movie. Like, you think about some main character? It's just the bodybuilder. <laughs> So you were doing some market research earlier for your upcoming project, and what did you what did you tell me when I came into the kitchen? Um, some bodybuilders make their YouTube videos look like a movie, and they're the main character, and it's like quite cringy, and I just skipped them. Why is it cringy? Because it's like, why do you think you're so important, and you're like you're making your life look like a movie, and it's not? Isn't that the whole point of life, though? Like, play the main character in your movie. Yeah, but if you want people to watch you and see like a real day in the life, then I just think it needs to be more authentic rather than acting like no names but the guy was like acting like he was sleeping with a sleeping mask eye mask on and he just like ripped it off and like he was just walking and it was slow motion yeah that's lame yeah name names who was it all right so session one of prep 
Well, I wanted to start it really, it's lower, lower one, but it's Wednesday. So I need to do this session otherwise the whole cadence will be off. So, lower one today, rest tomorrow. Up on Friday with uh, Kaifi, I'm going to do up with Kaifi. And then uh, I've lower two on Saturday, which is my like, I would say squat day, but it's not, it's just leg press as well. Sunday rest, and then Monday pull, Tuesday push. So, fairly balanced split. Um, I will do a video, I think, purely on training. Um, I did a little question box in the uh, broadcast the other day, and I think training, footage, videos, walkthroughs, form tips, is up the most requested. So I will definitely bring that for our prep. Uh, but initially what I wanted to say is this is going to be really fucking interesting for anyone who is uh, kind of on the wave or, or starting to hear about like fatigue management, recovery, you know, uh, sort of recovery techniques and methods, um, but particularly in the prep setting, particularly in the prep setting, because my split is, is, is mental. Um, <laughs> I just text Joe saying like this is crazy looking at it. So in total today, which is my lower day, obviously I've just started with a single arm, the handle lateral rest. It's just two sets, two sets with two two rest pauses, two Maya rep sets, which is basically where you do a full set, rest, full five breaths, you go again, you rest, you go again. So two sets, but obviously in total it's like six clusters. Uh, I then have one set of seated leg cut with again an MRP two, so a Maya rep two. So I'll do with 10 to 20 reps, I'll fail, I'll rest, I'll fail, I'll rest, I'll fail, okay? We're then gonna go into one set of, it's RDL as well, I'll do straight leg deads. Um, five to eight, straight set. Leg extension, MRP two again, so my rep set two again. And then finally two sets of leg press at the end uh, with integrated partials, just straight sets, 10 to 50. Um, that's not a long session. That's two, four, five, that's seven sets in the whole session. And the interesting thing is it's probably not gonna change uh, from a volume perspective. Like it's not gonna get escalated up, which is really interesting. Uh, because it obviously doesn't look like much at all, uh, which is, you know, it's uh, it's kind of really cool, to be honest, when I look back, because I've said this to a lot of people this week, like uh, people that are on prep, you know, prep goes, uh, training goes from being like the favorite part of your day to your absolute least favorite part of your day. When on prep, at least it, it always has done for me. It starts to feel like a chore, you feel like you're dragging, you feel like performance dropping. And obviously the idea here is not to see performance drop, if you see performance drop, you no longer using the tissue you've got. That's the classic use it or lose it versatility stuff that we all learn in fucking Jesus in PA. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see what goes on here. Obviously I'm very, very confident over the first few weeks that we're going to see progressions and then we may see some stalls, but I'd like to keep progressing or at least to, to hold that prep. And uh, I'm confident that if I do that, I will, I will bring a very, very fresh look at the end of prep. And again, I keep that myself back to this, but my main thing is I just want to enjoy it. And I think it's going to be an important part of it. So yeah. At the moment, obviously, I feel like I want to do that. But we follow the plan, we trust the process. Because uh, if you don't follow what you process to do, then why do you have a coach? Let's get into the rest of the session. Stand there, cool. I felt like never mind. Sorry, with a with, uh, few considerations with this track. I feel like I'm an interview, post my interview. So, Joe, how are you finding it? A um, few considerations, obviously, what's happened over the last couple of weeks. I've not trained for like two weeks on purpose. So planned downtime desensitization to training, or should I say, resensitization to training. Um, training, since working with Joe, it's kind of ending the summer. Training as a 
as a vector of progress, as Joey put it, I guess, needs to be treated like other vectors. So we have training, we have steroids, we have food, we have rest and recovery. Training you can you can get desensitized and resensitized too, right? So when you've been hitting fucking smashing those volume, you're gonna need a period of like think about like a cruise dose, yeah? You're gonna need a period of cruising. So I've just had my my two week cruise, <laughs> if you like, where I've not trained. Um, I was also in ambulance, but obviously coming back into training now. There's a few things that I'm just going from here thinking. Like, I, I, I want to apply intensity here because I only have you know one full one or two full sets to do so. But I'm going to have myself for me. It's fucking day one prep. It's not the stupid joke for me. So I'm being cautious, um, but I do still want to send it in terms of intensity. Um, and then the next thing I want to cover in terms of like the overall approach to training. Since I've been with Joe, I've done loads of length of partials, right? That's been like a big fucking feed of my training. I've done so much. Good. That's not in this plan, at least not, not today, not what I've seen. There used to be length and range of the highest movements, but there's no length in partials. Um, and I do believe the reason for that is that our sitting is kind of aware of it. So I'm pretty sure there was a study that suggested that long range training or length and range training will literally be the opposite. Um, if it's super beneficial in a surface when you're trying to build muscle, the opposite is true when you're in deficit. I mean, it will eat further into your recovery. You will not build muscle from it as well, um, which is kind of, it kind of makes sense. Like it's quite a highly fatiguing method of training. If you've watched any of the videos I did with Josh, we, I did with Josh on his channel, so he did with me, should I say. You will see that he was like fucking fried from the sessions that we did. So I'm obviously acclimatized to the length and range work, um, but now I'm not because I've had two weeks off. So yeah, going into a prep, there's much less length and range by stuff. There are a lot more set extenders, which I think some people will be like, oh, aren't they really fatiguing? But the reason for that is you're accumulating those 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 stimulative, those effective reps without all the buildup of like you know, a load of reps to get there. So if you do like a lower rep range, you spend less time getting to that that effective rep growing if you like and accumulating those effective reps. And then because you're going to failure and then pushing again, you accumulate more of them. So that I believe is is the setup. Maybe I need to check that with Joe, but that's what I think Drew talks about. fantastic session I actually very much enjoyed that the camera died some way through the final exercise which is two sets of integrated partials leg press which is savage now unfortunately as you can see my wife doesn't quite understand what I'm going through now for the next six months so she's bought herself not one cheesecake factory not even two cheesecake factory but actually three slices of cheesecake factory so this is day one of prep everyone uh, I hope you're here for moral support for the next six months because it's gonna be gonna be a bumpy rain <laughs> No, I'm joking. I've obviously eaten in front of her all day and she made me some lovely kofta, so thank you. Well, she cuts into that. I've had 200 grams of beef mince, 90 grams of cooked rice, and 90 grams of dry rice, and then 300 grams of veg. And that is my final savoury meal of the day. Well, she tucks into, what were you, you going to go for? So I have red velvet, yeah, chocolate, and caramel. I think from memory though, they're, they're all good actually. You should have got Oreo. If anyone does go to Cheesecake Factory, I'm not a big Oreo fan by the way. I think Oreo is like basic bitch, like level 10. But the cheesecake factory one is, is good. Chocolate? Yeah, if you want. It'll be rich. I want to be rich. You know, red velvet is just chocolate, isn't it? Like red. It's oh, bro, you're upside down, man. Oh, shit, yeah, that's good. Yeah, red velvet's got a bit of chocolate in it. For anyone who doesn't know, cheesecake factory, by the way, each one of these slices has like, I think, like 1200 calories in <gasps> which is mental. Are you serious? Yeah. And they, they do a slice of carrot cake, 
with 1,700 calories in it. That is, more, that is more calories in one slice of cake than I would eat probably all day at the end of prep. Careful, man. Um, I was fasting all day, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm fasting. It's gonna fall. <laughs> it's gonna fall, man. It's actually really funny watching um, a fast because we went to the mall the other day towards the end, well, approaching Iftar, and her food focus was like through the roof, which I thought was really funny because I could really relate to it. When do you feel like that? Like on prep, like obviously like, towards... Towards the end? Yeah, as prep goes on, like, you want what you can't have, don't you? So like when you're walking through somewhere and you see restaurant, 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 cake, coffee, all this stuff, like you, you want all of it. And uh, last time I said, uh, I want burgers, and then I'm gonna have pizza, and then I want cake, and then I want more burgers, and I was like, you're not gonna eat all that. What did I say I wanted to do? Today you said you wanted, oh, what did you want? You wanted cheesecake, pizza, chicken wrap. <laughs> I can't remember that other thing. Bagel, with feta cheese on it. Bagel, feta cheese, how weird is that? Anyway people, that's that's prep day one. So I've given you a bit of a roundup of the situation. You know the cardio, you know, well my steps are 8,000 by the way. Cardio, steps, meals. Um, I say two meals left today, I'm gonna have cream of rice with protein, then I'm gonna have cereal with protein. And I'm gonna get an early night, two and a half hours till I go to bed. Get up nice and early tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Enjoy this journey. I'm going to enjoy it as long as you watch. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> uh, like for me, comment for Aslan, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.